In this review, I'm going to be discussing the All Powers R1500 Lite. I'm going to give you a complete rundown of all the specs and how it performs in real world conditions. Hey, thanks for stopping in. If you're new here, my name's Justin and I cover everything from full home solar installs to doing reviews on portable power stations. Hopefully you find this video helpful. If you do, smash the thumbs up button. Let me know that I did an okay job. And I hope that you find some value in the overall review on this All Powers R1500 Lite. In the box, you'll receive the R1500 Lite portable power station, an AC charging cord, and the user manual. This portable power station weighs in right at 33 pounds and the overall dimensions are 16 by 12 by 10 inches. It's equipped with four AC outlets that do have dust covers and they close pretty easily as well. One car socket that has an output of 12 volts, 120 watts, four USB ports, two of those are USB-A at 18 watts and two are USB-C at 100 watts. The screen is easily seen indoors and outdoors. Located on the left side of the unit is the AC input and solar inputs. Overall, the casing is nicely designed. Cosmetically, it's a nice looking power station. The handles have a soft pad under the underside that makes it comfortable to handle. All Powers offers a five-year warranty on the R1500 Lite and the casing is pretty solid. This is a pure sine wave inverter with a continuous output rating of 1600 watts. As always, I put the advertised rating to the test, discharging the unit as close to 1600 watts as I possibly could. This is a stress test. Not every power station I test actually can do what they claim. Some overheat and shut off. This one never reached the temperature that triggered the cutoff, but it did heat up a tad. That's expected and normal under these conditions. 127 Fahrenheit was the final reading with the internal probe. One thing to take in consideration is that if you're going to try to charge this immediately after this sort of discharge, you may get a temperature warning. Although it did not get any hotter than 127 to 130 Fahrenheit, it continued to pass this test because it managed to heat so well and it continued to charge without heating up so bad that it had to shut off. If you're going to be using the R1500 light in close proximity, then overall noise outputs might be important to you. The max sound that I got out of this during max input charge of 1200 watts coming in was 54 decibels on my sound meter. Idle consumption is very important if you plan on using this system as a standby power source. The way I go about testing this is turning on the system, then turning on the AC outlets, activate it, and let the system set for 24 hours, and then I come back to get my reading. The R1500 light consumed 31% of the state of charge, roughly 13 watts per hour. And this power station is equipped with a UPS function, which allows you to use this as a power source. But if the power goes out, then it will switch from one power source to another power source in 15 milliseconds. That's so fast that you won't even recognize that it did a transfer. I did test the DC outlets on and off camera to make sure they function properly and can output what they claim. Safety is important, and that's why I always test the BMS when some of its safety features to make sure that it performs like it should. While some people call this a surge test, I call this a safety concern because the BMS should protect the system in an overload situation. So what I've done was to connect a heat gun and a heater to overload the system. In this test, I overload the 1600 watt inverter to see if we would get a surge reading of any sort and to make sure that the system would shut off when we exceed the continuous output rating of 1600 watts for a period of time. And I could not capture a reading of anything over 1600 watts at all. So there's not much room for surge capability if you overload the system over that 1600 watts, especially if you do that with a large draw of power like I did here, it will almost shut down immediately. Actually, this is a good thing because the system is not designed for 2,500 watts internally. So the BMS did its job perfectly. 
and it's a LiPo 4 battery and its overall rated capacity is 1,056 watt hours and the life cycle rating on this system is 3,500 cycles to 80%. In testing, I was able to squeeze out 935 watt hours of the rated 1,056 watt hours of capacity. The AC recharge took 1,159 watt hours to bring it back to 100%. The DC capacity discharge is a little strange. It will go all the way down to 0% when discharging with DC, but with AC, it cuts off at 5% to help protect the battery and prolong the life of the system. With that said, it has a usable capacity of 861 watt hours on the DC discharge side. Solar charging is maxed at 650 watts with AC charging maxed at 1200 watts and dual charging with solar and AC is maxed at 1200 watts of input also. Something that I get asked a lot is whether the power station can charge and discharge at the same time. Yes, you can charge and discharge this power station at the same time. To activate the Wi-Fi, you need to press and hold the button on the DC side for three seconds. This is labeled, but rather easy to overlook. I thought it was important to bring this to your attention, although once you get it activated, connecting the app is fairly simple. The app is limited in functionality when compared to other apps in this space, but it does allow for basic function controls. In most cases, this is all the user is looking for. However, I'm a modification junkie and would love to see more options to control the time of use, state of charge cutoffs, even screen timeouts. And having an upgrade code to update the system is just really strange. None of this is a deal breaker, but would be nice to see added flexibility over the system's options in the app. And while I understand that stopping the discharge at 5% can prolong the life and protect the system, I would like to see the opportunity to be able to set this to 0% like we do in other power stations. This is pretty unique to the All Powers brand that I've tested in the past. I've seen this and I've called it out as a negative thing. However, I've changed my approach on that because I do like the fact that it is protecting the system and prolonging the life of this. However, I do not like that I cannot change the state of charge cutoff. And that would be something nice to see in these portable power stations that we just don't see a lot. So having this discharge down to 5%, as long as the usable capacity is within range of the percentage that I like to see around that 90% or even 85 to 93%, that's acceptable. And this one came in at around 900, I think it's 35 watt hours of capacity out of that 1,056 watt hours of capacity. So going down to 5% really wasn't that big of a deal. And if you push this system beyond that 1600 watts, you got very little room for margin of error because once it goes over that 1600 watts, especially if it comes in at a larger surge, it's going to immediately shut down. But I should point out anything 1600 watts and below, the system worked great. And the app is very limited. I don't like that we can't control a lot of things in the app. It is pretty standard. It allows you the functionality to control the system, but it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility to modify things that I like to modify in a portable power station. But that's not a deal breaker. I do think that that's something they could fix in an app update. Now, strangely, they require you to have an upgrade code to upgrade the system. So like your firmware upgrades, I think you have to have that code, which makes it odd because when they push out a firmware update, you should be able to just click a button, not have to contact customer service to update your system. And overall, the All Powers R1500 Lite surprised me because it was able to complete the discharge and recharge stress tests that I put on these power stations. Many of the budget power stations cannot complete that test. I understand if you're using a system, you're probably not going to put it through that type of uh, <laughs> uh, harsh conditions, but they're rated for that and I always test for that. If they fail, it's an automatic fail for me because they're advertising something to perform and it can't perform that. So 
I just automatically fail a power station when it comes to that. If you can complete that without shutting off and nothing damages the system that I can find, then it's a pass for me. That's my type of testing. I want to see if these things can actually do what they said they could do. And the R1500 light did perform well. It never overheated and it actually cooled off as it started to uh, recharge. Something that I don't see in a lot of portable power stations. Even the top tier portable power stations sometimes can struggle with that recharge section of that test. So this did perform well. It did everything else like it's supposed to. Uh, so overall, I'm pretty happy with the R1500 Lite and I could recommend this system. If you are interested in finding deals on this because this does come in at a pretty uh, enticing price point, be sure to check out the links in the description below and I'll have any discount codes that I can get from All Powers in that so it can save you a little bit of money. Uh, either way, it's either this one or another one or catch me in the next one.